Hello everyone, myself Dr. Premal Patel from Silver Rock University and today we are going to discuss about a very important topic of Advanced Java, it is called as a JSP. So let us start to learn the JSP. Uh, here I am going to share the screen where you can see the presentations so through which we will discuss the each and every topic of JSP. Okay, so the screen is visible to you all. Now I am going to uh, make it large. Now it is visible to everyone. So JSP basically the name of JSP it is called as a Java Server Pages. Uh, what is Java Server Pages? What is the important of it and how it works? Those all things which we are going to discuss. So before starting of programming that how uh, we have to code in JSP, let us understand some theoretical portions or the background process that how JSP works, what is the basic uh, importance and why we have to learn that JSP. So these are all the things we have to discuss. So these are the outlines which uh, we will cover in the video lectures. You can see this JSP overview, the problem with servlet, life cycle of JSP, JSP processing, application design with MVC, then setting up the JSP environment, how we can create that JSP environment for programming, JSP directives, implicit object, actions and expression languages. So uh, first of all, I am going to start with basic the overview of JSP, Java Server Pages. It is an extension of Java servlet. So that means uh, I can say that if you want to learn good JSP, the basic prerequisite is the core uh, knowledge of object oriented programming, the core Java concepts and uh, if you are aware with the servlet, so you can easily understand or you can uh, understand in a better way that how JSP works. So because it is nothing uh, extra, uh, just it is you can say extension of servlet. Now they are used for developing web pages which have dynamic contents. For example, collecting input from the users. Uh, through the form and uh, fetch the records from the database and sharing the information between different pages. So in a web pages or website, uh, if you want to do some kind of this dynamic operations, you can use this JSP. So JSP is a server side, you can say it is a scripting language uh, and it is similar to uh, PHP. The JSP is a text file with .jsp extension. So the JSP code which you are going to save, it should be have .jsp extension. JSP contains a mixture of HTML as well as embedded Java code. So JSP is allows to create and using our own custom tag library, which was difficult in a servlet. So these are the basic features what we are getting in a JSP. Now we are going to discuss the basic problem statement of servlet. So in a servlet, what we are facing the issues which are overcome through the JSP. In a web application, uh, writing HTML code in a servlet programming is very difficult and looks large because we all know that servlet is nothing but a poor java programs we can say it is uh, saved as a dot java file so servlet is a one kind of java file now if you want to uh, code the html 
uh, inside of Java file. So it is little bit difficult. Also use the implicit object in subnet programming. We need to write some additional code to access those implicit objects. So these are the issues overcome through the JSP. JSP provides more functionality and features comparative to the servlet. So it is easy to use and need to write less code compared to the servlets. So that's why the JSP is more popular than the servlet. Let us come to the point that life cycle of JSP page. In a life cycle, what we have to learn the entire process from initializing to the ending of all the JSP file, how it works in a uh, computer. So initially the JSP convert to the servlet after that it is similar to the servlet life cycle. So if you are aware with the servlet life cycle that how servlet life cycle is work. So in a JSP, just one more module is added that the JSP file which is converted to the servlet file that means .jsp to .java file and after converting that Java file it is similar process as a servlet life cycle. So how it works we can see here in this uh, life cycle the first steps that you can see here it is translation of JSP to servlet that means in the JSP life cycle the web container translate the JSP code into the Java code means dot JSP files become our dot Java file correct now second step the compilation of servlet to bytecode that means dot class file bytecode that is dot class file so that is you can see here from this second step it is uh, we can say it is similar to the servlet life cycle just one module that translation of jsp to servlet means dot jsp to dot java file that is one additional module then after it is similar to the servlet life cycle so the compiler it compiles then it compiles the java file into the class file that means bytecode that is the second step then in the third step servlet class bytecode is loaded using the class loader into the web container so that is our third step you can see that here i have created this black border that means it is now works under the web container right now in a fourth step, you can see the container then create an instance of that servlet class. Now, through that instance, the initialized servlet will send the service request to JSP init method. So, first of all, the JSP init method will call while the instance will initialize the servlet class. Then the request processing here you can see the each and every request for the web containers call the JSP service method and that service method will process the code after the completion of those all the process the final step is that JSP cleanup where uh, the container remove the servlet instance from service it calls the JSP destroy method to perform any required cleanups. So these are the basic steps in a life cycle of JSP. Here I have mentioned those all seven steps that how it works. Translations, compilation, load, byte code, then object generated. Servlet is created, then after JSP init method will call, JSP service method will call, and finally JSP destroy method will involve. So these are the flow through which the JSP lifecycle works. Now we are going to discuss about JSP processing. So 
in our next video we will discuss that how jsp processing will work right now we are going to stop this video here and from next video we will discuss about jsp processing thank you so much everyone